Hey guys, and welcome to this session on the Rough Formatter and Linter. Now, in my view, this is an absolute game changer. This is awesome. Uh, and this was actually recommended via a comment on one of my previous videos. So yeah, cheers for that. That's very much appreciated. Um, now, up until up until now, so given, I'd say, the last sort of three or four years, I've been using a range of different linters. So I've been using Black, PyLint, PyCode style, PyDoc style. Occasionally, I'd use MyPy as well, and then sometimes I'd come along and use iSort to, to sort out the imports. Uh, now, what this does, this effectively collates like all of them in one go, and it's so stupidly fast that I had to break my code on purpose and run this again to check that it was actually doing its job. And in this video, I want to go over the basics of what it does and just get you started with like a bare bones, like skeleton setup. I want to run through how you can use it as a formatter and then run through how you can use it as a checker as well. So first things first, I just want to cover the basics, which I think really make it obviously nice to work with. Uh, we can use pip to install it, obviously, which is good. Um, it has built-in caching as well, which is quite nice. So if you have a mega large project, uh, and suppose, for example, you run the linting, you then run it again later on, suppose like 80% of your files remain unchanged, then this will just use the cached version to go and do it. So it's not going to relint something if it's you know not been changed, which is good. Uh, it has fixed support as well. So you can obviously, you can change this in the config, but it can automatically fix things that are wrong with your code as well. And there's an absolute ton of built-in rules, which is good. You can also integrate it into VS Code, which is really nice. Um, in general, I think it's a really well-designed, really well-structured package, and the documentation is brilliant as well. Uh, here's a quick comparison here. So this is linting the C Python code base from scratch. Now, I've been using PyLint for a, a number of years. I mean, check out the difference. Like, you know, put up 60 seconds here. And then, yeah, Rough comes along and just blows it out of the water. Yeah, and of course, uh, I'm going to be running it today in 3.11, but you can also use it all the way from 3.7 to 3.12, which is really good. Uh, so we'll quickly jump into VS Code. We'll do the checking first, and then we'll look at the Rough formatter next. And I want to show you how to do a toml file as well to basically configure this all in one place so it's all nice and neat. And welcome to my VS Code workspace. So let me show you kind of how I've got this all set out. I've got my March folder here. So I've just got my main.py and I've just got some kind of simple boilerplate code to do some stuff here. I actually got chat GBT to generate this because it's easy. So uh, and I've also got a rough.toml file. And we're going to take a look at this first. Just before we do, let me kind of show you what I've got for my environment setup. I've got a virtual environment activated. If I run pip list, I can see I've got rough installed here. If you don't, you can simply run pip install rough. Uh, if you've not got this installed, you'll see it do some stuff and then you're good to go. If you want to kind of verify it, just run pip list. Yeah, you can, there you go, you can see it. Right then, so the first thing I want to do is just go through the toml file. Uh, now what I've done, I've taken the one from the website, so I'll make sure that's linked in the description. And this is a fantastic place to start. So let me kind of get rid of this. I'll do a quick sweep from top to bottom. We'll kind of point out the important bits uh, and then we'll do some checking. Now the first thing I've got is my exclude list here. Now this is my kind of global setting. So if you're checking or kind of reformatting or fixing, this applies for both. So this comes obviously straight from the documentation. It's got a load of kind of basic stuff. So you have VS Code stuff in there, um, any virtual environment stuff, any talk stuff, that's all gonna be ignored, which is fine. Now this as well, this is global. So this is for if you're checking or you're reformatting, we're gonna say here, line length is 88 and the indent width is gonna be four. Okay, of course, change that to whatever you want to. And this here is where I think it gets really interesting. This is where you tell Ruff what rules you do and don't want to apply. And the way they do it is to do it by a letter and then a number. So if you have F or D, that's saying apply this entire rule set. If you have a letter and then a specific number, this is saying from this particular rule set, just give me these rules here. So E in this case translates to Pi code style. So I just want three certain rules from this. F means I want all of Pi flakes. D is my personal favorite, means I want all of PyDoc style. I really like to champion good documentation, so I want all of this, and you know, if my code has rubbish documentation, tell me about it, <laughs> okay? Uh, and in this case, this does. So ChatGPT didn't do a great job of this, so we'll hear about this when we try and do the linting. Uh, now, next up, we've got these two here. So I'll show this fix option uh, when we come to it, but this basically means if you have all in here, if you do like rough check, 
my code dash dash fix, this will try and fix all the things that it can fix. Um, just because, I mean, you might not want it to in some situations. If that was true, you would do something like this. So if I run my code like that, this would mean fix all of my code, but only fix it if this rule is violated. So this is unused imports. So you know, this would do just that. Whereas if you had this here, this would try and fix all the things that Ruff is able to fix. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Next one is about the usage of unused variables. In most cases, uh, linters don't like variables when they're defined and then not used somewhere. This is like a little regex to basically say, you know, if a variable matches this regex when it's underscore prefixed, let it happen, it's fine. Uh, of course, you can choose to get rid of this. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, but that's there in case you need it. And the next section is all about what to do when we ask Ruff to reformat our code. And in this case here, we can see I've gone for quote style as double. I think my code is already in double quotes. It is, yeah, but we'll do an example where we switch it. And I've just kept it really simple. I've said indent with spaces, um, trailing commas, I uh, don't want those in. And like the black formatter, we can detect the line endings automatically. And if I'm honest, this is a pretty solid kind of starter setup if you're getting going with Ruff. I mean, you can just go to the docs, you can copy and paste this like I did, and you can get going. Um, in our job, where my job I currently work at at the moment, we have quite a specific subset of rules. So all I've really done is taken this, taken my old rules and just put them in here. And that's it. It's that simple. So rather than pip installing like five different libraries, keep it up to date with all five of them. You don't need to. Just install Ruff, put them in here, and Ruff will go ahead and do it. And at much greater speed, so, you know, it's a winner. So with that said, uh, let's stop the talking and actually do some linting. So I've got my main.py in the same folder here. If I do ls, you can see it. And we can do Ruff check. If I do Ruff check dot, what this does, this basically goes through every Python file in its current directory. So I've got, if I do pwd, I'm in YouTube code march, I've got one Python file, so therefore rough check dot will just do that Python file. You can also reference files by name as well. So if you go ahead and clear the screen and then just did rough check main.py, you can just target a specific Python file. There we go, we can see it's stuff here. Another way you can do it, if you did something like this here, uh, and to be honest, I don't really see a massive need for this. But if you do this, it will lock up the terminal unless you do that and kick it into the background. But this will kind of watch all of the Python files in a directory. And if any of them are like changed or resaved and they have changes, it will kind of try to relint them automatically. Uh, I've not used it personally a huge amount myself, just because obviously it locks up the terminal or it becomes a background process. But yeah, just, you know, it's good to know it's there. Pretty nice, right? So if I run this and we'll see what it outputs, we can see we've got these kind of things in red here. So we've got D400, D404, 101, etc. And the way to interpret this is the first letter basically tells you what rule set it's come from. So if I go back to my Toml file here, I've put D in the selection and D corresponds with Py doc style. So D400 means this is rule 400 from the Py doc style set of rules, which is pretty good. Uh, let's try and break another. Let's try and do um, base URL. So let's make this variable misbehave like that. Run again. And we can see here, ah, we have an F821. So F, that is PyFlakes, and that is PyFlake rule 821, undefined name, base URLs. Brilliant. So we can see in this case here, we've violated two different rule sets. Well, not brilliant, depending on how you see it. You can see as well, it's also thrown up a couple of different warnings, which is pretty good. Uh, now, of course, you know, depending on how you've set this up, you could make it so that these become errors or, you know, or not, it's up to you. Uh, it's quite flexible in that way. Now, what this will do, suppose you're running this as part of a CI CD, it will make it exit like a non-zero exit code. So if this has been executed as part of a script, this will count as a fail, which is pretty good. So suppose you have some CI CD, which run some unit tests, do some integration tests, and then run some linting. This will fail if the code is not up to standard. So I use it personally in work. I think it's great. You know, it's a nice way to kind of do this linting on mass and then making sure that pipelines fail if the linting fails for whatever reason. So, you know, you could just run the code locally and then once you're happy, you can push your code up and then we're all good to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and try something. Let's remove this and let's try and correct one of these rules here. So if I take the first one, D400, 
first line should end of a period. So go to my code and yeah, it wants this to end like that instead. So if I rerun this now, we should see this rule violation disappear. Uh, yeah, there we go. Looks good. Uh, we'll try and fix one more, then we'll move on. So missing doc string and init here. Uh, let's see, that is this. So if I do um, set up the instance, so I know not the greatest doc string, you know, I promise when I code in real life I'm better than that. <laughs> there we go. Nice, okay. And let's see what else it's complained at. So line eight, first line should end of a period again. Yeah, put that in. And that should get rid of that one now. And it has. So you can see like if you were doing this in practice, you'd basically just kind of go down this one by one, fixing your doc strings, make it local happy. And then when you're finally good to go, the entire linting would pass. Uh, let me just quickly turn off that rule for a second just to make it so it does all pass. And you get this, all checks passed. Passes with a nice exit code, and then everyone's happy. Uh, now, for the second bit of the video, I wanna show you how you can do some formatting. So I'll clear the screen, uh, we'll hop back in and we'll look at some nice simple ways to reformat your code. So for this section, I've just gone ahead and asked ChatGPT to put some kind of vague doc strings on here. And whilst this strictly isn't the formatting bit, it kind of comes underneath it, in my, in my point of view anyway. So we do rough check at main.py, and we get a whole load of these errors here, like how bad chat GBT has been. <laughs> so uh, if we look at the bottom, we can see 16 fixable with the dash dash fix option. Now I'll put this under the formatting bit because it is, you know, it is changing our code. So you do this, fix, and yeah, you can see how the code slightly changed there. Uh, now if we go ahead and run this again without the dash dash fix, yeah, it's only got five now, which is good. So it's always kind of good to have a go at running this if you see that the option is there for it to be able to fix stuff. Uh, so things like this, for example, say we did, um, let's do from math import um, square root. So there's a violation here. We've got a, a, an unused import. If we go ahead and run rough check main.py, uh, we should be able to see, there it is. So F401, we'll see what that corresponds to. F, F is pi flakes, so we can see pi flakes has flagged this up as something it doesn't like. So we can just do fix and it's gone just like that. Pretty cool, right? Right, and let's take a look at the formatting then. So if I come down to rough toml and head down to my formatting section here, we can see we've got our basic options. Um, probably the most obvious one here is double. So say for example, let's suppose we had, um, let's, let's turn this into a triple quoted string, but using like this instead. So all I've got to do this time is rather doing rough check main.py, uh, just get rid of check, and we can go ahead and write format in here. And hopefully we should see this guy here go ahead and change. Uh, yeah, there it is, pretty cool, right? Uh, we can still see, we still got some warnings and that's absolutely fine. But little things like this as well. I mean, let's suppose for example, we made this all kind of like horribly spaced here. Uh, let's go ahead and run the rough formatter it spaces out for you. So it just looks super nice. Let's suppose we had this, we had this, uh, we've got this like that. Let's see, yeah, it just puts it all back in place for you. So the formatter is there just kind of, almost like do a bit of housekeeping on your code. So in practice, what I'd probably do is run the formatter, check out the warning to make sure there's nothing too scary. And then once that's done, I'll then go ahead and run the rough check, make sure that all passes. And if so, then yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, let me just quickly try another example. I'm gonna quickly pull one from the rough documentation. And here it is here. So obviously just bear in mind these are, you know, these are missing out, these are defined somewhere else. But we've got kind of some really ugly code. Go ahead and run rough format. And it, it automatically kind of spaces this out here. So check out this, it's done uh, our function kind of parameters here. They've all been spaced out and made look a bit nicer. Uh, even though these aren't used, it's, you know, it's fine for now just for this example. But yeah, I think the whole kind of point of this is that the formatters there just kind of give you, you know, the chance to kind of tidy up and give your code a bit of housekeeping before you then apply the checker on it. And I think if you're learning code from scratch, this is a kind of a nice thing to do. It's kind of good to compare your code before and after the formatter. And then of course, in future, you can make your code look more like that in the first place, which is always nice. And there we have it guys. Uh, that is the rough formatter and linter. Of course, I've not shown everything in this. It's an absolutely massive library here. Of course, I've not addressed these warnings and that's really not for this video. This is just to give you a flavor as to kind of what 
rough is. And if I was to summarize it, basically it's kind of like a one size fits all formatter and linter. It's fairly new on the scene, but I'll definitely recommend installing it, giving it a go and see if it can work for your code. Cheers for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next session.